Welcome to this lesson guys where we will be going over everything relating to fractions. Okay, not everything. In this particular lesson, we are going to be looking at adding two fractions together and also taking away two fractions. So behind me here, we have 2 over 3 plus 1 over 6 and uh, we also have 2 over 3 plus 4 over 5. Um, now, they, both of them will present their own challenges, which we will be looking at shortly. Right, so the first thing that you need to be aware of is denominators and numerators. When two fractions, when you have two fractions and the denominators, which is the number here, is different, then you have got to make those denominators the same. It is not like, for example, when you have 2 over 5 plus 1 over 5, the denominators are exactly the same. So what you can do is just add the numerators to give you 2 plus 1, which is 3, over 5. That's okay, because the denominators are the same. And with takeaway, you do exactly the same thing. You could just take away. So for example, you could have 6 um, over 8 minus 2 over 8. And because the denominators are the same, you could just to take away the numerators. So you could do 6 minus 2, which is 4 over 8. And of course, you could also simplify that, which becomes a half by dividing by 4 on the numerator and denominator. So having seen what happens when the denominator is the same, let's go back and look at this. So we have a denominator of 3 here and 6 here. So we want to have a common denominator between them. So we can look at the 3 and say, right, 3 and 6, they have something in common, which is 3, if you multiply that by 2, will become 6. So you can bring out the equivalent fraction of this first fraction here by multiplying this by 2. So if you multiply this whole thing by 2, okay, you get a denominator of 6, because 3 times 2 is 6, and you also have to multiply the numerator by 2, so you get 4. Okay, This one, you can leave it as it is, you can just drag it down, so you get 1 over 6. Now, you have the same denominator, and you can just add the numerators. So you get 4 plus 1, which is 5 over 6. So now, can you see the final answer has the same denominator as both of these? Right, so let's have a look at this one now. So we've got 2 over 3 plus 4 over 5. So, once again, um, we want to have something in common between 3 and 5. So, you will know that um, 15 is common between 3 and 5. But how do you get 15? This is the question. So, let's, we know that 15 is the lowest common multiple of both of these numbers. So, we now need to figure out how we can have 15 for both of them, right? So, what times 3 gives you 15? If you times this by 5, it gives you 15. What times 5 gives you 15? You can times it by 3 to give you 15. Sometimes you will notice that you can actually just multiply with the opposite number. So here, you had 3 and 5, so you multiply this one by 5 and this one by 3. But it's not always wise to do that because sometimes you can end up with really, really big numbers and it's better just to look for the lowest common multiple. Right, so going back to this, uh, we are going to multiply this entire fraction by 5. So we've already done that to get 15, so we multiply the top. So 2 times by 5, which is 10. Here, we're going to multiply the uh, 4 here by 3, so 4 times by 3 equals 12. Once again, we now have two equivalent fractions for these, and we have the denominators exactly the same. So we can just add the top along. So 10 plus 12 equals 22 over 15. Now, you will notice that this is actually a top-heavy fraction, it's a, or an improper fraction. So we can break this down as a mixed number. And to do that, we ask ourselves, how many times does 15 go into 22? 15 goes into 22 once, so you write a big one here. And the leftover is 7 out of 15. And we can't simplify the 7 out of 15 any further, so our answer, final answer is 1 and 7 fifteenths. Now we are going to look at a subtraction one. Now subtraction works exactly the same way. The method is exactly the same, except you are taken away at the end. All right. So just like before, we want to find a common, lowest common multiple of 10 and 6. Um, you can think of it, or you can go for the method that I told you earlier, which is to multiply by the opposite um, number. So here you'll multiply this by 6 and this by 10. And in fact, 60, 
um, which is the number, is actually the lowest common multiple of these numbers. So, let's write this down. So we're going to have 60 here as our denominator. Now, what do we multiply this with, the whole fraction? We're going to multiply by 6, and we're going to multiply this whole fraction by 10. So, 9 times 6 is 54. 5 times 10 here is 50. So now we have 54 minus 50 to do because the denominator is the same. So we are able to do that. And that gives us 4 over 60, which simplifies. We cancel down. Now you can cancel down in two steps or you can do it in one step. Um, sometimes it's easier to do in two steps, which is to divide by 2 and then divide by 2 again. But if you're happy dividing by 4 straight away, you could do that. So 4 divided by 4 equals 1. 60 divided by 4 equals 15. So your answer is 1 over 15. Now let's look at this one here on the board. We have 1 minus 2 over 10 minus 2 over 8. Now at first glance, you might think, what's going on here? Do we have two fractions? Do we have three numbers? There are two ways that you can actually deal with this. You can actually just choose to deal with these two on their own, get the result, and then take away 2 over 8. Or you can deal with it in one go. Whichever way you're comfortable with, um, you could do that. But perhaps because um, a lot of you uh, maybe are varying abilities, I might be inclined to actually show you um, just those two first, and then get the result of that, and then introduce this one in. Um, this one here. In fact, it's actually probably the easier option to do that as well. So let's do that real quick. So um, I'm gonna, that, this is gonna be quite straightforward for me because I don't need to, I can make one into any fraction um, with any denom denominator. And in this case, I want a denominator of 10. So I'm gonna have 10 over 10 as my representation for one. And this is gonna be two over 10 here. So this 10 minus two is gonna give me eight over 10. So this whole thing here is equal to 8 over 10. Now I can introduce this back. So here I can have minus 2 over 8. So I've got 8 over 10 minus 2 over 8. You probably will notice something here and you're probably crying out at home, cancel sir, cancel. Yes, I can cancel down. You could either um, simplify cancel down now, okay, and then you'll have no simplifying to do at the end, or you can continue from here and then um, simplify at the end um, the final answer that you get, okay? So um, I'm just gonna keep the answer as it is, like I said. So um, we want to have the same denominator and it seems to be 80. So we're gonna have the denominators of 80 for both of them. And we need to multiply this whole fraction, this whole fraction by eight, and this whole fraction we're gonna multiply by 10. So eight, times by 8 will give me 64, 2 times by 10 will give me 20, 64 minus 20 gives me um, 44 over 80. Now we need to simplify this fraction. We can divide by 2, divide by 2 until we can't divide by 2 anymore. So let's do that. So if you divide that by 2, you get uh, 22 over 40, divide that by 2 again, you get um, 11 over 20, and you can't divide anymore. And that's your final answer. Now, had you simplified here, so if you had done four over five minus one over four, then found the same denominators and take them away, you would have got directly the answer 11 over 20. So you would have ended up to the correct answer either way. Now, so often you might get fractions where you have mixed numbers to deal with. Um, and this might require an additional step. So in this case, we are gonna to have to convert, if you look at the first question here, I've got two for you. Um, if you look at this one, we are gonna convert this one into a top heavy fraction or an improper fraction. And to do that, what do we do? We do one times by the five and add three. So one times by the five is five, add the three is eight. So eight over five. And then this requires nothing, so it's just three over four. And then we just do what we are, um, what we've been doing all lessons so far. So, which is to have the lowest common multiple, so that the denominators could be the same. So, what is the lowest common multiple between five and four? We know it is 20, okay? So therefore we times this fraction by four and this fraction by five. So eight times by four equals 32. 
3 times by 5 equals 15. So 32 plus 15 now, and that gives me 45, 47 over 20. Now, this final answer that you have, 47 over 20, you wouldn't want to leave it like that, just in case the question is expecting you to also simplify. And often, a question will be given to you as a mixed number, and it will expect you to put your answer as a mixed number, because this is a top-heavy fraction. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. So, you will break this into a mixed number. So 20 goes into 47 how many times? 20 goes into 47, you got 20, you got 40, so it goes in two whole times. And the leftover from 40 to 47 is 7 20th. So 2 and 7 20th is your final answer. Now, looking at this final question, uh, both the numbers are mixed numbers. Now, some students, what they do is they do 2 minus 1, uh, and then they deal with just the fractions, which is good, which is fine, okay? However, some students tend to struggle because when they actually deal with just the fractions, um, and by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, cover your ears, don't worry about it, because I'll tell you how to, you should be doing it, or how you, you should be doing it so that you don't come across this problem, right? So like I was saying, some students take the second fraction, um, and when the second fraction is actually bigger, they end up with a negative, and they don't know how to deal with the negative aspect of it. So avoid that. This is how you want to be doing it without that complication of negative fractions. Let's convert both of them into improper fractions or top heavy. So for the first one, two times four plus one, which is uh, two times four is eight, plus one is nine over four, minus one times seven um, plus six, which is 13, so 13 over seven. So I've converted both of them into improper fractions. Now I will find a common denominator between four and seven. And it appears the common denominator is 28. So I will make both of them have a denominator of 28. How? Multiply this one, this whole fraction, by 7. Multiply this whole fraction by 4. Now the numbers do get large now, so be aware of that. So 9 times 7 equals 63. 13 times 4 equals 26, 20, 52. Okay, so now we have two fractions with the same denominator. So 63 minus 52 gives me 11 over 28. And that is my answer. Now I can't simplify this. I don't need to make this into a, a mixed number because it's a proper fraction. Hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. You now know how to deal with the addition and subtraction of fractions. Um, in the next video, I will be looking at multiplying and dividing fractions. So see you in the next video.